Well hello everybody, it's Lynn here from Lion Learners Northamptonshire and we're in my beautifully sunny back garden staring at large bits of grass and that is because today's theme follows on from what we've been learning about habitats and so far we've learnt about rainforests yesterday and with Claire and then we had deserts on Monday with Rachel. So today we're looking at grasslands. So let's have a look at the map. So grasslands can be found in all parts of the world apart from Antarctica. The continent of Antarctica right up here, look. And today we're going to have a look at some grassland critters from around the world. We obviously haven't got some of these. If I zoom in here, look, you can see in South Africa on what we call the savanna grassland that we have got things like giraffes. We're going to have a look at some grassland critters from this area here, Chile and Argentina and Ecuador and Peru. And then we're going to have a look at a grassland critter from the United Kingdom and from Europe. And then we're going to have a look at grassland critters from Africa and India. So let's have a look at some of the critters in my garden and let's talk about the different types of grassland. So we have got savanna grassland, which looks like this. And we have what we call temperate type of grasslands that looks like this. So obviously this one's not very bright in that sun, is it? Obviously different critters from different types of things. And some critters migrate to different types of grassland, of course, to eat. The savanna grasslands are very, very dry. But what all grasslands have in common is very, very few trees. And that's because it doesn't have sufficient rainfall for, it to, for them to grow very well. So let's make our way over and have a look at the Peruvian grassland critters that live with me here in Lion Learners, Northamptonshire. So they're in their outdoor run at the moment. So I'm just going to make it, oh, here they all go, look. Just going to prop open that run so we can have a good old look at what's going on. So here we have, hello girls. We have my four girls. Bubble and Squeak and Sugar and Spice and these are guinea pigs, part of the rodent family and I think I'm going to move around the other side so we can actually see them a bit more. They're actually getting out of the heat today, it's very hot here in Northamptonshire today but they're actually doing what they would do in the wild. So apart from Spice there in the corner, which is very typical of Spice, the one with the brown face, will probably come straight up to the camera in a minute to see if she's going to be fed. She's the greedy girl of the bunch, aren't you, sweetie? So guinea pigs in the wild would live in Chile and Peru and areas like that and eat grass, and eat grass type uh, materials. So they would forage around on the grassland floor, really. They're not climbers at all, these type of animals. And in the wild, they would live in little burrows. I'm going to show you some rabbit burrows later on that my bunnies have done. So in captivity, our pet guinea pigs, this is just their, one of their day runs that they can get access to lots of grass. And in the daytime, uh, in their runs, we put lots of little enrichment so that it replicates what they would look like in the wild. So these types of tunnels and little beds and things and things for them to hide in, like, like this big tunnel here. They love this sort of thing because that's what they would do. So I'm going to go and get a little bit of food for these piggies so that we can see them all come around and see the, them a bit more beautifully. Let me go and find where I put my food. Here it is. So when we think of grasslands, we tend to think of the savannah more often than any other. But of course, some of the grasslands in the northern regions of the world are a little bit moister and they have a bit more, by the way, of rainfall. Whereas the savannas have very, very dry seasons, followed by a wet monsoon season. 
let's go this way round. Here we go, girls. And I hope I don't get bopped on the head. Here we are. Hi, girls. Hello. So traditionally in the savannas then and the grasslands, we'll see things like zebras and giraffes. And of course, because we see grazing animals on the grasslands, we also see their predators. And the predators of things like a zebra, of course, is going to be like a carnivorous cat, a lion or a tiger, or something that can actually stalk amongst the grass and actually then leap on their prey. Whereas these guinea pigs, they tend to have predators like owls and birds of prey and foxes and things like that. And the unique thing about guinea pigs is that, hello, sweetie is that their teeth keep growing. So in the wild, of course, they would eat lots and lots of fibrous foods and their fibrous foods keep their teeth nice and trim. So in captivity, we do exactly the same. The moment they're eating some garden weeds, some dandelion that I freshly picked this morning. And then most of the day they'll munch around on the grass and get a small portion of greens at night. But a large proportion of these guys die of hay, hay. Um, because of course in the wild they would eat lots and lots of dry grasses and therefore we do exactly the same in captivity. Lots and lots of dry grasses keeps them healthy, keeps their digestive systems nice and healthy and it keeps their teeth nice and healthy. And while we're having a peek at them, the next animal we're going to meet has just gone legging it past me if this animal can go legging it past because they are slow animals so we might leave the guinea pigs for a moment let's just have a little watch of them feed hi sweeties they really do love their foods guinea pigs communicate with each other they're what we call social animals so if you're ever thinking about a pet guinea pig you really must get at least two and preferably three in case one does then die shooting into this little tunnel here that was squeak over there with a the little black face is bubble this greedy little munchkin here is spice and somewhere hidden away is sugar she always tends to be the shyer one and this one that you're looking at here now tends to be the greedy one and just before we leave the guinea pigs and go and hunt down that animal that's sprinting down the garden these animals are what we call crepuscular. So they would come out more of the early morning and then sort of late afternoon, early evening, really, to do their grazing. And the rest of the time they tend to spend sort of fairly chilled out. So here are our grassland eaters from Peru, Chile and Argentina. Say bye bye to them for now. Bye girls. Can you hear them talking? I'm not sure whether you can pick up on camera, but guinea pigs communicate with each other by squeaking and little rumbly noises. It's very, very cute. So we'd say goodbye to those for a moment. Let's go and have a look at something else. Oh, so the next critters we're going to have a look at, there's four of them I have. I'm focusing on the grass for a minute because there it is in the distance, the end of my fish pond. There's one of them. This is Portia. Hi Portia. And rather than get my big shadow in the camera, I think I'll go and get Portia some food. She'll probably come towards me when she sees that there's food. And I think Clover was over here. She is, look. So I'm gonna show you Clover actually, because this is quite interesting what Clover's done with herself. She's managed to get herself right underneath this plant. It's quite a prickly plant actually. So here she is, look. We take a little peek at her. There she is, peekaboo. And what she's done is typical of what they normally do in the height of the summer. Can't really see her very well there. There she is, look. So this is very typical of a tortoise. It's so hot here today in Northamptonshire that they're doing what they would do in the heat of the summer. In sort of July time, really, they're hiding away in the shade. And that sounds crazy because this, this tortoise here is actually from um, Turkey and they have um, 
African versions of this tortoise as well. It's called a Spurthy tortoise. So we'll leave her sort of banked on there. We'll go and find this one, look, and we'll feed this one, I think. Let's find some food for this one. So this is another tortoise. We have two more to show you in a moment. This is the beautiful Portia. And if we give Portia a bit of to dandelion. So tortoises, some tortoises are from grasslands and some tortoises are from tropical areas. Um, and some are even desert species. So tortoises, there are just hundreds of different species of them. These are really Turkish spur thighs and again they're found them in Africa. They call them spur thighs because we probably can't see it on Portia but they've got little spurs on their back legs. And this young girl here is 20 years old now. Um, actually she's over 20 years old because she's lived with me for 20 years so she's probably about 23 now, 24. And as you can see again they, were, they would eat grass type of things and weeds and again because the areas that they were living were very arid, arid means dry so grassland areas typically they don't have trees because the trees just can't grow because there's not enough water to uh, help the trees to grow and of course some grassland areas also have um, fires and the fires are actually very beneficial because they burn things down to the ground and then the shoots emerge tortoises that lived in, in areas where there were fires actually can escape the fire they dig themselves into scrapes we call a scrape so it's like a little underground burrow that they will dig themselves into and then from there they can actually hide and tuck themselves in the shells and actually can can survive bushfires quite well now this is her this is she's going to get a treat for the day i rarely give my tortoises treats like this which might sound really cruel but a tortoise has a stomach that does need to be eating grasses and to tomato is just um, too rich for them really to have but she absolutely loves it so probably once every couple of weeks they get a little piece of tomato but other than that they're on a weed diet uh, that you can find in the gardens and in the little meadows so she is a turkish spur thigh tortoise so we're going to leave portia for a minute enjoying her tomato we'll make sure that clover gets a bit too we're going to go and meet another two tortoises so let's have a little wander up the grassy garden again into here now it would be hard to tell the size difference at the moment so let's have a look if I put a piece of tomato next to this little tortoise, you should be able to see the size difference, although I'm not actually going to let this tortoise eat the tomato. Can you see the different sizes there? So she's not much bigger than the actual tomato. This is Spit and Spot, and I'm gonna lift them out from here for a minute, but being very cautious because they will leg it. So Spit and Spot are Indian tortoises. And as you can see, Spitz decided to leg it. Can be remarkably quick for tiny little things. And these are so tiny, these two tortoises. They're only babies. So probably now six months old, but this tortoise doesn't actually grow very big. So if I put my hand here, you can see Spot here is a little male tortoise. And Spit that's decided that's the place to be over there is probably going to be female. And the only reason I can tell that is if I pop them together you can see a substantial size difference despite them both being the same age. So these two little cuties are from India and they're what we call Indian star tortoises and they are very different to the tortoises we've just seen. So the two tortoises we've just seen, because they're actually from Turkey and the northern Mediterranean, and the Mediterranean region, southern Mediterranean, I'm gonna pop that one back. They actually hibernate. So in the wild, the Porsche that we saw earlier, they would in winter, I'm gonna try and zoom in. Can I zoom in while I'm filming? Possibly not. So they, would hibernate. They would hide away in the burrows that we talked about and the scrapes and go to sleep for the winter. Whereas these little tiny critters, they actually don't. They're from a much, much warmer climate that's warmer all year round. So a little tiny spot here will stay awake. And their needs in captivity as pets is also very different. So the larger two tortoises, Portia and Clover, 
they can stay outside in the garden in weather like this and they have their little basking shed for cold weather and early in the morning with special sun lamps on it whereas these two only can come out into the garden on days like this that replicates their climate and the rest of the time they they live in a in a large vivarium so let's have a little peek at her so diet wise these little critters would eat again grasses these ones would eat far more of the grasses than the turkish birthi let's have a little close-up of the cutie but these tiny tiny ones are quite vulnerable to predators but the biggest threat to tortoises in the world is actually human beings so unfortunately some countries like to eat tortoises and turtles and so they are stolen from the wild quite a lot and unfortunately sold as pets and also eaten by people in certain countries that like tortoise meat but not for these little critters so i am just going to lift this little one up make sure that one's covered over these in my garden if left unattended could easily be taken by a bird of prey because they're so tiny and i'm just going to walk down the garden with this little one and show you the difference but i won't put them too close together because the species we can't mix because they are from different can we see oh, <laughs> different climates this one just thinks that there's something to eat look there can we see the sheer difference there in sizes of portia and spot so another grassland critters so all the critters that we've seen so far because they come from grasslands of course they are herbivores some tortoises do eat meat these tortoises tend not to so we're just going to pop little tiny spot back and we're going to meet our last animal there they go just let you have a little peek at them while i make sure there's some water in there oh tip that out and I think what we'll do is we'll just give these guys a bit of what dandelion too. So, even though these two here that you see now would spend a lot of their day sunbathing uh, under their sun lamps in their special vivarium, in this type of weather, it's about 28 degrees here in Northampton at the moment, they actually will all hide under this little tunnel. So we don't want them to get too hot. Because they are so tiny, these could overheat quite quickly and equally they could cool down quite quickly if the weather turned cold so we don't leave these guys in the garden for very long or unattended of course so i think it's time to have a look at our final critter and our final critter is from let's go and have a look back at the map so so far we haven't really talked much about these animals here because we actually don't have any of these so the typical savannah animals that we would know of would be things like the zebra the cheetahs and the leopards and of course the african and the indian elephants we're going to meet an animal now we've met the indian tortoise and we've met the peruvian guinea pig so we're going to go up and find the UK just here and Europe and we're going to go and have a look at our final critter and for these we're definitely going to need some dandelion so let's go and meet the rabbits so today we are going to meet the giant rabbits we couldn't meet them last time because one of the giant rabbits has been quite poorly but she is back on form and if you can see their run at the moment and the bales of hay and the straw this is the kind of thing that the savannah would look like when it's at its driest now these of course are not savannah animals very few animals this size would live in the savannah anyway it would mainly be insects and then things like the zebras that are eaten by things like the cheetahs but this giant fella here hard to tell his scale he's eight eight and a half kilos in weight and he's a giant continental rabbit and let's just give bum bun a bit of dandelion and see if he eats so rabbits are like guinea pigs they are what we call crepuscular and that means they are oh bluey is back on form they are dawn and dusk critters so during the day they quite like to just snooze and these guys really like their setup here because they've got things that they can hide under 
if it's really cold they can go into this tunnel here or hide from the rain and then they actually have access to a big greenhouse here and they're very lucky because in captivity they've also got this big tunnel here look and this tunnel takes them through into this big shed and I'm going to show you their underground shed for a moment because their underground shed they have a bale of hay in here look of course and more hay to jump on in here and then they have an underground area where they can tunnel away and that's where they like to spend a lot of the day when it gets very very warm because it's so cool underground but let's go back and have a look at them oh i think bum bum might be making his way out isn't that big fella and a big scratch so rabbits are not dissimilar to guinea pigs when it comes to what they like to eat they like to eat their greens they are again grazing animals so they will gnaw at hay particularly hay if you can see there's big bales of hay behind so they're what i call their their eating platforms so they can actually sit on those platforms and actually eat and a rabbit in captivity has to eat as much of its body size in hay every day to keep its digestive system nice and healthy and to keep its teeth nice and nice and um trimmed down a bit like the guinea pigs do so hi bluey so bluey's less social and she's the one that's recently been quite poorly so she's back on form so we need to give her a piece of dandelion and then what we're going to do is go and meet the little rabbits just need to keep enough enough food left over for them so this is the beautiful bum bun so these would actually live in most of europe they weren't actually native to our country rabbits they were brought over by the spaniards and they were introduced to the uk originally for fur and meat and now they're widespread and, and seen as a native species in the grasslands and the woodlands of Europe and, of course, the United Kingdom. So they actually, are, of course, are herbivores. And their main predators in this country would be the fox. This size rabbit, a fox would struggle to take, if I'm honest. It's probably the size of a fox, but they would still give it a good old go. And the smaller rabbits that we're going to meet in a minute, they're main predators would be things like birds of prey so let's leave these big guys alone for a minute and leave your run zone guys so you can come into the garden they tend not to come into the garden bizarrely in the day i can leave their run open all day but their morning they like their morning run in the garden and they like their evening run so this is the outdoor summer run for the little rabbits and as you can see here look this almost replicates some of the grassland areas that you might see very dry straw like and what that is unfortunately is they've been digging themselves a new warren this last couple of days there's the little pop hole look and when I show you inside you'll see what I call their little warren so these rabbits again like the guinea pigs they live in underground tunnels so in here we try and replicate that so they've got a big tunnel plaything and they've got little things to hop on and then if we go into their day run because they are morning and evening type critters they are at the moment probably snoozing let's see if we can see them probably on their bale of hay yep there they are look so this is peter and jessica is gone underground thank you jessica so if i can try and peek down here not easy to see under here you won't see that this their underground warrens so rabbits make things like underground tunnels or burrows that we call warrens and in captivity it's really important we don't disturb these because it might look a bit of a mess in this indoor enclosure but if I show you what's here look another tunnel in there and there she is she's popped herself out and if you can see here this vast area dug out this is actually all of their doing so what they've done hi chickens some chickens next door they've dug that out and that keeps them safe so although they're not at all at risk in my garden underneath here is actually a wire bottom so they can't actually dig out which they're rather disappointed about there goes peter hi peter hi mate so we try not to disturb their warrens because they like familiarity so rabbits again are a species that's heavily predated and therefore they have to 
make sure they know where they are, their whereabouts, and therefore they need to know their in and out areas of their runs. So in captivity, we tend to keep it the same. Come on, Peter. Peter. Come on, boy. Let's see if we can get Peter to come and eat for us today. So Peter, by comparison to Bun Bun, who you saw earlier, is around about three kilos. So here he comes. Hello, fella. So he's quite small. He doesn't look small on camera, I'm sure. Come on, Peter. Good boy. So Peter and Jessica are the rabbits that visit when we're coming out to schools and parties. Whereas Bun Bun and Bluey don't tend to. They go to very big events, that's all. But they're a little bit too big to be carting around. They're certainly too big to sit on your knee. There he goes, look eating his dandelion and here's Jessica to steal it watch her steal it she's very crafty like that hi Jessie Jessie want a bit hi Jessie want a bit come on Jessica this is your sweetie your sweetie so there are our three critters for today we have met guinea pigs that live on the grasslands of Peru. We've met tortoises from both India and Turkey, out the ones that live in Africa that mainly live on the savannah. Hello Peter. Hi fella. Come say hi. And we've met the Indian star tortoises that actually do live in the grassland regions of India, but actually can, some species of them can move around to different temperate areas and even live in the forest areas. So I think we will finish there, but we will just go back and have another little peek at the guinea pigs. It's always nice to finish on the guinea pigs. These um, rabbits, interestingly, have access to indoors, outdoors, all day until night time, and then we lock them in for their own safety. But in the day, this is where they tend to be. This lovely bale of hay here, again, they can eat it and they can sit on it. They really do seem to spend most of their day on there. It can get quite hot otherwise, or underground. If it gets really, really warm, they go underground. Don't you guys? Hi, Peter. Hi, Jessica. What you can hear in the background is a chicken. In the next run, I have got chickens and they are sitting on eggs at the moment. So hopefully in the next week or two, we will be able to show you some baby chicks that have hatched. So in the meantime, let's say bye bye to Jessica and Peter and their lovely, beautiful warren that they've created. Look, you saw Peter shoot under there. Let's go and say bye bye to the little guinea pigs. And tomorrow... It is, I've forgotten what's tomorrow. It's definitely Kristen. Oh, Kristen's going to talk about food chains tomorrow. So you're going to be looking at food webs and predators and preys and things like that. Here we are, girls. Hello. We say goodbye from the guinea pigs. Hi. There they go, chirping away to each other. I'd probably come close if I had some more dandelion. Hi girls. And then we'll say goodbye to the tortoises. Here's one look, eating away a little bit of dandelion. Nicely protected there. I think we're just finished by saying goodbye to Bun Bun and Bluey. Here they are. Yep, back to sleep look, as you can predict. There they are. So, bye for now from Lion Learners Northamptonshire.